Hi everyone, Frankie from EasyPowerWall.com. Nice to meet you again. Today we're gonna talk again about batteries and the battery system. We talked about several topics, the BMS leads, BMS protection boards. We already installed the BMS, but we didn't fire it up. And that's the goal of today's video. We will fire up the BMS. So enjoy the movie, very interesting topic. Before we start the video, I want to mention that I fully paid the BMSs myself. So the BMS comes in this little box. It's a pity I didn't make an uh, unbox video, but all four BMSs are installed. But the BMS is, uh, comes in this box. It's well packed and well protected in this plastic bubble wrap. It has the balance leads. Of course, you have the BMS itself. And the latest versions come with this uh, switch. So make sure if you order a BMS that you get one of the latest version with the switch. In previous versions you had to connect a 5 volt battery to activate the BMS. So this system is much much better. So here again JK did a great job. And it's uh, with a glowing uh, light so they really walk the extra mile to uh, deliver a great product. There's also a one pager, I'm not really sure, it's at least in English and in German. I will take a, a copy, it will be in a GPEG, but I also will make a great uh, PDF with a scanner and it will be uh, on the website. We have several brands today of BMSs. We have Dali, we have JK and there are many others on the market. But the unique selling point of this one is its balance feature. This brand can balance up to 2 amp, where most BMSs stop at 100 or 150 milliamps. And if you build this large bank of 15, 16 kilowatt hour, 100 milliamp won't make any difference. So you really need this kind of uh, unit. There is literally there is no competition. There is this is the, the best BMS on the market. Other BMSs also balance when they charge this bms is fully configurable it can balance during discharge charge when it's idle so this is really the best of the best let's go over all the settings how i did the connection how i logged in but first of all a very important topic is the selection of the bms if you go to a seller you often see 10, 15, maybe 20 models. So in the first minute from now, I will show you how you can select the right model. Let's check how the JK logic works for our model. JK, that's an easy one. That's the brand of our BMS, G-Kong. B1A, B stands for active balancing, and we have the 1A or 2A version. It's simple, 1A, 1 amp or 2 amp balancing. 20S stands for the maximum number of cell strings you can connect. It's maximum 20S, but it will also work for 7, 12, 13, 14, 15, whatever you want and whatever technology. That's all managed in the software. 15P is for nominal current. So you can use the BMS up to 150 amp. Just multiply the value by 10. Maximum current is the value multiplied by 2. So in a short amount of time you can use the BMS up to 300 amps. There's also an addition C and H. C stands for canvas supported and H is a connection to connect a heat pad. If you live in an area where it's very cold, you can connect a heat pad and heat the batteries to a temperature that they are still useful. Are you ready for a small exercise? Let's give it a try. So that wasn't that difficult after all. Next step is connecting the BMS with your smartphone. That's pretty easy these days. For Apple and Android users, you can download 
the application. So you just search for JK BMS, you find the app, it's free, download it and install it on your mobile phone. In the next topic I will show you how I fired the JK BMS when I installed the battery pack a few months ago. So I'll show you how it went. The system is not finished but I just want to try the first BMS. So let's discover together how this works. I connected the BMS protection board via the cables with the BMS, hooked up the ground. Don't forget to hook up the ground. If it's not connected, it will not work. I attach the on off switch and I'm ready to go. So let's see how this works. First, we have to switch on the BMS. So we hear the beeps. Scan on your mobile phone and immediately I see the BMS coming in the application. JK want to make a pair, please put in password. And you get a one pager with all the information. The password, standard password is one, two, three, four. And wow, we are connected. We see all voltages and it says cell count is not equal to settings. Okay, cell count, we have 16. I was looking, but it's the next tab. Okay, we have to verify passwords. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. So I really, you should change the password afterwards, of course. We have 16 cells, capacity 280 amp hours, balance trigger voltage 0.01. Okay, calibration current, let's increase it to one amp. When you start your application, this is how it looks. Maybe a bit difficult on the screen, so let's zoom in and see what we got. On the top, you see time 90D, nine hours, and so on. This is not a serial number. This is the running time of the BMS. So this BMS worked already for 90 days, 9 hours and so on. Just below you see the line charge on, discharge on, balance on. This is something you can set in the control tab. You can set only 3 or 4 things and these are the items you can set. Charge on off, discharge on off and balance on off. Normally they are always on. I see one reason where you can switch off the balance. That's when you want to attach a external balancer. If your cells are completely out of balance, maybe you need a higher current balancing system. But in general, standard, they're always on. Below that we have the uh, voltage, you see the 52.55, that's the voltage of your system. The battery power, so that's if you know the formula for power, it's voltage multiplied by current and you see 52.5 multiplied by 10. This battery pack generates 532 watts. Cycle capacity is 2206 amper hours that means that's the total amount of energy that has been through this uh, BMS balance current for a moment is uh, zero amps that's normal we will see it later when we go over the settings balancing uh, will start when following criteria are met we need a cell voltage of 3.3 volt and cell difference is over 0.01 or 0 0.03 it depends on your settings 
I've I had the setting at 0.01 volt for a moment. Uh, remaining battery is 46%. The cycle count. Honestly, I don't know how uh, JK calculates the cycle count. My best guess is that they take the cycle capacity and that divided by the amper hours of the battery. So divided by 280. So this is close to uh, 7. If you see the profile of my usage, I never go uh, to 80%, never go below 20. So in theory, that's not a cycle. So my cycle count is closer to 1 or 2, uh, but definitely not 7. The MOS temp, that's the temperature of the MOSFET inside the JK BMS, and that's 17 degrees for the moment. To the right, the uh, number of amperage, we see a minus uh, in front of the 10, so we are drawing 10 amps from the battery pack. The battery capacity is 280 amp hours. This is a setting you have to manually introduce in the BMS. The average cell voltage, 3.284 volts. The cell voltage difference between your 16 cells, there's the highest cell voltage and the lowest cell voltage, that difference is 0 0.009 volts. So all cells uh, are matched, they're close to each other, but of course it's pretty normal because they're in the 3.28 voltage zone and as you know we have a very flat curve uh, when using LiPo4 batteries. We're at 46%, so we have nearly half the capacity of the battery left. And we have two temperature sensors connected to the BMS, and they're very close to 17 degrees. So that's the main screen of the JK BMS, and this is very important information. I regularly check it, not every day, but every two, three days, I go and Check the batteries and see if everything goes well. If you see a balance current that's activated all the time, there might be a problem with one of your cells. So let's um, move the screen and let's see what we have here. Here we see all the cell voltages over our 16 cells. Everything seems to be uh, in balance, but that we saw in the previous screen so the system is uh, performing as it should be cell wire resistance honestly i don't know how this works in our case it's not that important because as you have maybe seen in the previous videos all our balance leads are made of the same material and they're all equally long so all resistance of all leads should be the same and i don't have to change or adapt anything. I didn't change it. It's the standard value of the BMS. All right, let's go to the advanced settings. Let's dive into the advanced settings menu. Important to know if you want to change any setting here, you have to enter the password. The standard password is one, two, three, four, five, six. At the top, you can choose the technology. Lithium ion life for 4 LTO. It's good to know if you change the setting, it will automatically fill all the settings with the standard parameters of that technology. So if you programmed everything for life for 4 and you just want to have a look for the lithium ion settings, know that all settings will be overwritten and you have to redo the programming. So be very cautious about this uh, thing. Let's go over the uh, basic settings of the advanced menu. Most of these settings are already uh, entered. So the cell count 16, the battery capacity 280 amp hours, the balance trigger voltage is uh, 10 millivolt, the calibrating voltage. So if you measure the voltage of the pack and you compare it with the voltage measured by the BMS, there might be some uh, unbalance and here you can enter the voltage you measured uh, on the battery taps. 
and the calibrating current. Now let's go over all these uh, advanced settings. For your convenience, I've made a spreadsheet with all the values and the explanation of every setting. So don't worry if it goes too fast, of course you can pause the video and review it um, several times. But I will also uh, add a link in the description of the video with the explanation of all these parameters. So we have cell OVP, cell over voltage protection. If one of the cells hits 3.48 volt, the BMS will go in protection. The cell OVPR, over voltage protection return, when the highest cell goes below 3.42, then the BMS will unblock, will release again. Cell under voltage protection return, maybe we start with the cell under voltage protection. When one cell goes below 2.9 volts, the BMS will go in protection. It will prevent any discharge. Of course, the charge and balance will work. Cell under volt protection return. When the lowest cell hits again the 2.98 volt, the BMS will uh, allow us again to discharge the battery. Power off voltage. Uh, we have the under voltage protection 2.9 volt but if the battery remains idle you don't charge maybe when the charger is broken and the battery goes lower even when it's in idle state you have some idle consumption or so then the BMS will go into sleep mode start balance 3.35 uh, volt when one of the cells hits this voltage I will start balancing. If you have a new pack, some guys uh, choose to do a top balancing before they make uh, the battery pack. I haven't done that. Uh, then you can choose to, to balance all the time. You can start from 2.9 and let the, let the cells balance. But once you're in an active state and all your cells are balanced, you can use uh, this setting starting from 3.35 volts up to 3.48 the maximum balance current is 1 amp I have the 1 amp version <clears throat> continued charge current that's the current that I can uh, charge the battery with uh, the BMS allows to charge up to 150 but I have uh, four battery packs with a total of 60 kilowatt hours so I have only 70 but if you want if you have only 16 batteries you can put it to 100 or 150 it depends on your charger but for my convenience I have set it to 70 amps charge OCP stands for charge over current protection uh, that's in seconds so you can charge at a higher current but only for 30 seconds so you can go to 100 amps even 140 but for 30 seconds if you go over that then it will go into protection next is the charge OCPR charge over current protection return after 60 seconds it will return to working order Continued discharge current, so you can draw constant 100 amps. Technically it's possible to do uh, 150, but here I have limited it to 100 because I have four banks and I will never exceed that kind amount of uh, current. So I have set it to uh, 100 amps, so I have some headroom and then it should may extend the lifetime of the BMS. Discharge over current protection, so in uh, 300 seconds I can charge above that 100, I can go to 150, but only for 300 seconds. Discharge over current protection return, after 60 seconds it will the allow the BMS to work again. The SCP short current protection in uh, 1000 
microseconds. That's one millisecond. So you allow the BMS one millisecond of a short. So if you have a pump that draws a lot of current for the BMS, it might look like a short, but it can't take any longer than one millisecond. And the short current protection return is 60 seconds. You have a penalty of 60 seconds and then the BMS will start working in. Uh, charge over temperature. Um, it looks like I have an old screenshot here, but I changed the settings. I have checked the, um, the specifications of the battery and the over temperature protection is set to 50. So 50 volts. The over temperature protection return is 45. And the same for discharge, I have set it to 50 and over temperature protection return for discharge is 45. Charge under voltage temperature protection. We can't use LiPo 4 below zero degrees. So we have a small margin when temperature goes below two degrees, I will not allow to charge the batteries. I will allow again when the temperature rises above three degrees. That's the charge under voltage temperature recovery. Then the MOS OTP, that's the MOSFET over temperature protection, that's set to 90 and the return is set to 70. You can change these values, these are locked into the BMS. Then user private data, honestly I don't know what this um, means or what you can do with it. My best guess is that it's used to it's something used by the engineers. If you insert a certain string, you get data back from the BMS. I think it's used for diagnostic data or to see how the BMS works if it comes back to the, to the factory. So these are the uh, most important advanced settings. Then we have the uh, wire settings. You can add extra resistance to uh, the wires. But as I mentioned before, I didn't do that because all the balance leads uh, are the same brand, the same quality and all the same length. So I didn't have to add any resistance or change the settings. So you're done. The BMS is set and should work fine for the next couple of uh, months, years. And you shouldn't do any maintenance. Just check it from time to time and see if everything works well. Of course. Feel free to challenge me if you have an other um, data set or write your comments under the movie. I really uh, hope you liked the video. It's a very important topic. You really should install a BMS when working with this life pool for batteries. It's a huge investment, so protect your investment. And as I said before, JK BMS is your best insurance for longevity of your batteries. Stay safe, stay charged, and I wish you a lot of energy. See you soon. First things first, I will switch off the uh, BMS. I think it's a long press. The lid goes out, so the BMS is switched off. Now for safety reasons, I will Switch off the current and now let's remove the uh, connectors. Let's switch on the and now activate the BMS. Sounds great. What happens when I remove the switch? It seems it's 
it's still working it's still balanced balance current it's one amp so even with the switch detached the BMS is activated and keeps running so I don't think I will uh, I'll have the uh, switch installed or should I